What is she really alluding at here? She says that the, essentially that the Fed's done all it can and we need the fiscal plan in place. Of course, it gets through. What are, what are the implications of it for the economy and also perhaps investment as a consequence? Actually, I think, you know, obviously a lot of people focused on her dollar comments and on the, the stimulus comments. But I think for me, one of the most interesting pieces of what she said was she'll be watching the debt financing costs uh, very closely. So I, I think she's alluding to the fact that, yes, obviously the government wants to do more. And that 1.9 trillion stimulus is obviously um, something that's already on the table. But I think she's also saying that, that the, the Fed, if they, if they want them to loosen fiscal policy, they need to help them out in terms of making sure that their financing costs are held down, which, if, which effectively means cap bond yields. Uh, and when, when we look at like the Global Fund Manager survey that was released this week uh, from, from Merrill Lynch, you do see that the, um, you know, people are fo um, focused on a steeper yield curve, but our sense is actually the Fed is a long way from allowing that, that to happen from here. Obviously, we've seen yields move higher. But I think, you know, Yellen, former Fed chairman, is basically telling the current Fed chairman, uh, you need to help us. Um, we need to work together. And I think that's what's going to come out of this administration. And also, Steve, you know, when we have those $600 checks, if people are going to get $2,000 checks, does it mean even more froth coming into the equity market, as it were, because those $600 checks really engendered uh, perhaps that huge rally we saw in the spring? I think there was two things that was uh, at play here, and obviously that, that those um, checks were one part of it, so they were the fuel to the fire, if you like. Um, but then people also had time on their hands to, to do things as well. So I think those those aspects did come out. Um, you know, if you did see more money uh, going uh, going into people's pockets, uh, savings rates are already high, so maybe that will find its way into the market ultimately. I, I, the only thing I would say is it will take some time for this to happen. I don't think this is something that's going to happen very quickly. Um, because of that very, very slender margin in the Senate. Um, so we're expecting, obviously, the Republicans to um, use the filibuster from time to time, and that on certain areas of the stimulus is likely to be the case. So um, it's coming, um, but maybe not as quickly as markets would like. The, the other big one is foreign affairs, naturally. And uh, Janet Yellen was almost intimating that things will carry on as normal in the relationship with Beijing. So will it be more of a cosmetic change than anything else? I think what, we, what we've seen over the past uh, five years is, is a shift from pre, pre that time where uh, the world was very focused on global poverty, which is effectively uh, reducing income inequality around the globe. We've now, obviously, with uh, Trump's uh, election victory four years ago, we've seen that they're moving towards in uh, domestic inequality within the states. And I think that means that the structural element of uh, fighting uh, to some extent or, or putting the brakes on, at very least, globalization remains in place. And obviously, that places China in the crosshairs uh, from a U.S. policy perspective. I think the one thing that will change is the way that, um, that, that the U.S. addresses this, both from a you know, engaging with key strategic partners around the world, so the Europe's and the Australia's and the UK's of this, uh, of their uh, of their uh, partnerships, um, and also we're less likely to be driven by tweets. We're more likely to be driven by a concerted effort uh, to try and achieve uh, achieve change, uh, and that could that could reduce some of the uncertainty. So ultimately, likely to be positive for investors, but you know, as I say, the the, the strategic direction is largely unchanged. Uh, Steve, looking at the markets, Hong Kong headed towards 30,000, India towards 50,000. A lot of the good news is already priced in. What's the risk of a reversal? What catalysts are needed for, for the rally to be sustained? Yeah, I think, I think you're right. I think we have seen a lot of the good news priced in. And actually, if you look across markets, they look, uh, you know, look oversold or overbought, depending on which markets you're looking at. So, uh, the dollar looked oversold, so we're seeing a little bit of a short-term bounce, which we think can continue. Uh, Treasury yields have been uh, going up very sharply. Again, we think that maybe that's not going to continue. And we believe that equity markets uh, have priced in a lot of good news. So whether you're looking at the put core ratio, um, RSI, or our own um, uh, indicator of market diversity, they're all pointing, pointing towards a short-term pullback or consolidation. Um, so, you know, obviously, Time horizon is always difficult and, and materiality in terms of quantum. 
uh, pretty difficult. But maybe banking on something around 7% from an equity market perspective is probably uh, where we would be. Maybe the dollar index can go, uh, you know, maybe up another 2% or so from here um, before we resume the downtrend. So looking to buy the dip in equities uh, and sell the rally in the dollar, uh, but maybe we should be a little bit more patient. And that takes us to the question of the day, uh, Steve. How would the dollar fare under Yellen? I mean, we heard from Yellen saying that she's not after a weak dollar policy. What, what could make her change her mind? I don't think. She, I mean, it's, I don't think she wants to say she wants a weaker dollar because I think that then opens her um, to other governments taking the same stance from their own currency perspective, and you see that's definitely. Um, what, uh, what what she alluded to in her comments as well. Um, but ultimately, I think she'll be very happy with a weaker dollar. Um, so, and if you uh, add up her comments on fiscal stimulus and or fun also funding costs, which effectively means the Fed continues to expand its balance sheet for another 12, 24 months at least, um, then from that perspective, that would probably depress the dollar together with the fiscal and trade deficits that we're already seeing. So um, our sense is that we, we broke lower in November last year. Um, yes, we're consolidating short term, but we're going to see another um, six, seven percent from where we are today uh, on the downside for the dollar over the coming 12 months. Um, and that could continue into 2022. But, you know, we don't have to make that call today.